I remember join our Discord and then join our our clan in Destiny too. No, and, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting you over the coals here, Neo. But I remember Neo, distinctly. Yeah. I remember Neo goes, uh, guys. I think the clan's cool and everything, but kind of funny is active. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna join them. <laughs> Neo abandoned us I'm, for the I'm, kind I'm, of funny. I'm clan. Make, there are so many people. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna sorry. make. I'm gonna make kind of funny. Uh, my primary because they're earning me more. And I don't want to be with you guys anymore. Uh, and look, look, <laughs> you made a decision for your character. And I think a lot of people did. As Do well. I blame Neo? I don't blame him. I don't, I don't blame, blame no, him. Blame Neo. the system. That blame fucking the system. It, Yeah, it fault. was broke ass shit. Yeah. Welcome to the Emergent Gamer Podcast. This is Felix Hergood. Oh, Neo Yoshi. <laughs> you fucking ass. Hey, we're, sorry, keeping we're keeping that in. We're keeping that in. And and this is Trip Zero. <laughs> and this is Trip Zero. <laughs> we is. were we guys, guys, we literally uh practiced like a quick uh, boom 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 intro. And we're like, all right, it'll be Felix, it'll be Neo, then it'll be Trip. And <laughs> you just heard what That's that sounded like. Got. It's past Neo's bedtime, but you're gonna be all right, oh. bud. You're gonna be fine. I'll make it. I'll make it. Uh, yeah. So we're uh, we're here for episode uh, 164. 164 on the discords again. Um, there there is not a lot of news this week. There is a really awesome trailer that just dropped. I mean, I, mean, I have uh-huh. some words on this trailer, but like for the for the most part, it looked cool. You know. Uh, I watched some words. Watched a couple trailer breakdowns. I think we're also going to do a little bit of a further discussion of God of War. Just Neo finished it, and I just had some thoughts. Um, and then Trip Zero, you were going to update us on some what Destiny news? We'll do some more Destiny stuff. Not too much, but they've been drip feeding um, more news and even more lore. They put lore on the website now, so we're going to be able to dive in a little bit more. Um, and the expansion comes out next week. Like right now, as of our recording, oh, it's May 2nd, uh, Tuesday, May 8th, 12 p.m., I believe, Eastern Standard Time is reset. That is when uh, Warmind will go live. What? Expansion uh, 2 for okay, Destiny 2. Expansion 2. Okay. So do we know what's coming in this DLC? We, like, like, like what, what kind of story is going to be there? I know we they announced the Warmind expansion, right? Mm-hmm. Or the the and um, it's going to have the the layer, the raid layer for that as it'll, well. It'll right? have another raid layer, yes. So they they did this thing where they have the raid released, right? They had they had a raid that came out with the original base game, and then expansion one came out, and it was what they called a raid layer uh, experience. I equated it to was like a Crota's End raid from Destiny One. Basically, it was a shorter encounter, right? Like there was really just one boss, one main big boss and a lot of mechanic encounters, but it was fun. Like it was a really good, well thought out uh, raid. And it was cool because it built into the lore of the original raid. The original raid took place on a giant ship from one of the alien races. And the raid layer took place in a different area of the ship that taught you more about the ship, but also why they're doing what they're doing and what they're doing in the solar system. So I appreciate that stuff. You guys know I'm a lore slut. So Yo, totally. it, was, it was cool to hear that. <laughs> you guys know I'm a lore slut. <laughs> I'm a lore slut, baby. I'm a real lore. So a- according lore, to information lore, lore. that we have here, this is the this is also going to be in the Leviathan yep. as well. This, this will continue building upon the Leviathan ship. Yep. And it's called the Spire of Star. Yeah. This is what they're doing. We don't know anything about that. Usually they've been pretty tight-lipped about raid information until it goes live. Um, I believe it's the 11th, if I remember that correctly. So the yeah, expansion comes yeah. out 8th. The 11th is when uh, the raid layer goes live. And the only thing people have been speculating about is that on the top of the ship, there's like like a like a castle-looking, town-looking area, right? That's That's really where the first encounter took place. There is like a big tower. There's like a spire that's part of that thing. So maybe it'll be in there, you know, maybe some kind of vertical movement i don't know something like that yeah they they released a piece of like a teaser footage uh teaser image and it, it does show a bunch of ships uh with a spot like a like a tower in it yeah yeah dog so that looks that does look pretty cool 
Um, yeah, we're sorry. What were we saying? Should I come out of retirement? Is it is it time to bring back the loan look, the loan hunter? Look, if I here's what I'll say to people listening out there that have not uh, dived into Destiny Two. Or you mean since like returning players, people? No, no, no. my first anyone. message is to new players. If you're if you're interested, um, you may be hearing a lot. May sound exciting. By all means, spend your money how you want. I believe for a new player, your best option is to still wait until the fall. There's going to be some major gameplay changes coming out um, in this expansion for sure, but the game is going to be revamped in very major ways in the fall. Um, as of now, for people that have played it, there's, I think, enough to bring you back if you don't mind doing a little bit of grinding to get caught up. You know? Um, but other than that, wait. Wait for the most part. But like I've been doing kind of just very basic uh, maintenance on my character. My char- I have one character at the max level, and I'm probably not going to do all three that you can have in the game. I'm probably going to keep one just where it's at. Um, but I've been keeping current with uh, some of the Crucible. They've been introducing six versus six players for, for Iron Banner control matches, uh, which has felt really good because Destiny 2 made everything 4v4. Mm-hmm. And that caused a lot of issues because your time to kill was so high and everyone just kind of bunched up in their groups of teammates and, and no one really felt... It didn't feel fun. You didn't have any moments where you explored off on your own and, and had amazing plays. And I think we've chatted about this on the show too and how great Iron yeah. Banner has felt with 6. Um, Iron Banner is this week too. Are you just, just now cool permanently a PC player? No. No, no, no. I'm, I'm still primarily PS4. But I am at the end game on my PC build. And I believe if Locke has any free time, um, we might dive into a little bit of that too. Felix. Um, I'm trying to remember my experience playing Destiny 2. I played it for a much shorter amount of time than you guys. But I, I don't know. I seem to remember that my biggest problem wasn't with the gameplay of that game. Maybe it was. I don't know if secretly deep down in my soul it was really just I didn't like the gameplay. I just remember having such a scornful attitude toward the clan mode. That was my... And I don't know if anything's changing about how that functioned. But my biggest problem was with the clan mode. Like It was almost like every single time I joined, if uh, I wanted to play with randos in the world... They didn't want to because they wanted to do the clan because they yeah. would earn the clan. The clan mode would get them the rewards they wanted. So if I wasn't in their clan, they didn't see a point to playing with me. Yeah, Is that I agree. Still the actually, same 100%. Way? Um, they are adjusting how your clan rewards um, reward you and how much they're weighted. Uh, it all depends on your character's light level. So your character's power in the game, right? Um, there's a certain point, there's a certain level you'll reach where your clan rewards every week will not be weighted as heavily an increase to your character as rewards you get from the true pinnacle endgame content, which will be the raid, and which will be for Crucible players, for the player versus player people, um, the trials matches. Okay, so it will... Like, it'll literally right. be, you'll get less light level from your clan rewards than you'll get from end game content well they've designed that that in a way to yeah yeah but there's there's less of a weight on that right there's there's less need to be like i've got to grind out this clan reward because it's literally as powerful as me busting my ass to play um trials so why would i do that i would just do the clan thing and then i'll be done and also it's also only rewarded you for having more people in the clan so like if you were a tiny clan like the rewards were not as not as massive so that was you, kind of a yeah, turn off from having a as plan. your clan leveled up, right? There were <laughs> there were extra bonuses in the world. Like you were able to get maybe the yeah. chance of random drops from guys. Um, yeah, stuff re- like that. I yeah. remember at one, at one point it was like you, me, and Trip Zero were trying to like push the emergent gamer clan. We were like, "Yo, dude, yeah, um, emergent gamer clan, that, clan." That's never gone away. Oh, emerging it's gamer. still it's still yeah, there. It's still yeah. here. For, but, for, I, for but, life. but I please remember, join. I remember join our Discord and then join our our clan in Destiny too. <laughs> no, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Putting you over the coals here, Neo. But I remember Neo, distinctly. Yeah. I remember Neo goes, 
Uh, guys, I think the clan's cool and everything, but kind of funny is active. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna join them. <laughs> and Neo abandoned us I'm, for the I'm kind gonna, of funny. I'm make, there are so many people. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna sorry. make. I'm gonna make kind of funny. Uh, my primary because they're earning me more. And I don't want to be with you guys anymore. <laughs> and look, look, you made a decision for your character. And I think a lot of people did. As Do well. I blame Neo? I don't blame him. I don't, I don't blame, blame no, you. Blame the system. That blame fucking, the system. It, yeah, it fault. was broke ass shit. Yeah. God damn it, Bungie. So then um, I ended, I basically ended up being this guy who was just alone playing with no one. <laughs> Lone wolf. Oh. I was just, and that's why I had to stop. Cause I, yeah, cause he bought it on the Xbox. You idiot. Dude, we're all on the yeah. PS4. Oh, that's, that's also a thing. You did buy it on Xbox. Didn't I alter? Here's what I couldn't remember. Didn't oh, I, that's right. You did. You bought did, two copies. Didn't I ultimately buy it on the PlayStation anyway? I think you did, but you were never on there. <laughs> but you were all, and you were alternating on your stream between the Xbox version and the PS4 version. <laughs> I'm dumb. For the record, yes. anyone listening, I'm dumb. I'm a dumb fuck. You're a dumb fuck. <laughs> Thought you guys know. And I mean that. I mean that in the most loving way possible. <laughs> oh god. Um. So yeah, they are. They're changing clan rewards. Um, probably some of the coolest things they're adding in this expansion um, is the idea of quests to make your exotic weapons even more powerful. Now that sounds so in, in, that sounds cool. It, yeah, in Destiny Two, uh, actually in Destiny One as well, there are there are a tier of weapons called exotic weapons. All right, they drop um, at the rarest uh, possible possibility, and they have a um, distinct color of gold, right? They do, yeah. That's that's uh, it's like the WoW, the World of Warcraft color scheme uh, for rarity in the game. But they are they're the highest rarity. Um, you can only wear one exotic weapon and one exotic piece of armor. And every exotic gun uh, or or armor piece has very specific skills um, and effects. Some are, are, are very very cool. Um, so for the guns in the in the most recent expansion that's currently out, they they added a tier of weapons called masterwork weapons. It was kind of a, um, a halfway point to address concerns that getting guns as rewards was boring because they made the decision to have all the guns drop with the same statistics. You as a player had nothing to grind for if you got all your guns because you knew just what the gun was going to be, right? So there, the, it's another problem with Destiny 2's investment systems. There wasn't enough to keep people just in there looking for something. So they added this kind of middle ground option where you can possibly get uh, a legendary gun dropping as a masterwork, which has one of its statistics buffed a little bit. Um, or you can uh, break down masterworks you get that you don't want for materials, use those special materials to create your own gun into a masterwork version. And then you can re-roll that gun if it didn't get the stat bump you wanted. So it added a little bit of little bit of grind, not a full fix, right? But like an interesting element to the game for sure. They're making the exotics uh, masterwork level, but they won't drop at masterwork. Every gun will have a specific quest with specific different things you'll have to accomplish in the game uh, to enable its masterwork perk. And some of that um, gives it more abilities, not just a stat increase. It so, cannot, yeah, it cannot be just a generic stat increase it has to be no. like you You're take get, it this far you get an advantage like that's really cool and you were showing yep. me that one uh what's that gun called that has the, like the the pulsing that can stop the yeah now i i'm not sure i have to uh, i gotta look this up um i won't know for the for the podcast so you guys will have to check this out on your own but the the tractor cannon uh, is one of the guns that's getting uh, getting buffed. It's getting changed. The tractor cannon is a shotgun based gun. It looks like the portal gun though. It's like a little weird kind of you know claw like thing that you use. But it's like a shotgun. It shoots a pulse. It bumps enemies. Right. It's it's a goofy gun. Kind of like, a like gun, uh, what, what's his right? name? Is his name Rufio from? Uh... <laughs> Lucio. Lucio. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gives him he gives him the boop. I don't know shit about Overwatch, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rufio. Rufio. <laughs> but yeah, kind of um, like kind of like what uh Lucio does in uh, Overwatch, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um but one of the things that they're doing with with um with the tractor cannon is they're they're adding suppression to it, which makes it very viable because if you're fighting a boss 
um, you you hit it with the tractor cannon and it becomes suppressed and the boss will like it'll cower away from you um, and it'll it'll be really weak to void damage so you could really do a lot of damage in, in a lot of time you just melt them but what's cool is suppression in player versus player will literally stop an incoming super ability so players play so for like good. about five minutes to build up a special power and like usually in crucible even if you're fucking terrible your super will guarantee you one kill at least right if you're not an idiot yeah, um, yeah if you don't waste it they they demonstrated a um it was a warlock versus a titan and uh, one of the titan builds has a smashing ability where the titan just flies up with electric energy and unstoppable smashes it around in and previous it, builds it will in kill you in the air it'll kill you uh, in a huge radius around it it just it's you just if you see it coming you're just like well fuck me right dude, dude, i've been floating above somebody probably like 10 20 feet above the yeah, characters just get, just get fucking and they smashed. smashed on the ground and i died Went, yeah, what the f- for sure, fuck, dude. <laughs> they so they showed um, a warlock coming around the corner with the new updated tractor cannon and a titan literally running and then beginning the the smash animation. And this titan is probably about like like five frames from hitting the ground. And this warlock does like a slide maneuver and hits him with a tractor cannon. Titan's gone. Titan's dead. Titan is vaporized. And when you have a super ability active, you've got even more health than normal. So this thing one-shotted uh, a Titan in a super move. That's huge. That's going to create some pretty wild like possibilities if you have all the right factors, you know? So just a cool new element to add to at least the competitive side of the game. Very nice. So, I mean, like, there's, there's new things to do. Like, the exotic masterworks will be a good grind. Of course, we're going to have new stories, new strikes. Um, the Nightfall... The weekly nightfall missions are really hard strikes that you can grind for for endgame materials. They already have specific guns that you can earn that are only going to be earned in the nightfall version of those missions. They're 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 doing a lot to keep people playing through the summer, which I think is really, really smart. They're taking necessary steps to get they to are. keep people involved in yeah. In their game, yeah. Now, the end game activity, besides the raid layer, there's something called a escalation protocol, which is like a, a wave-based horde mode, almost, on uh, on the new destination of Mars, which is a planet we saw in Destiny 1. Um, you will get rewards midway through, and you will get rewards at the end if you survive. But apparently, this is a, a pretty brutal um, onslaught, and I'm pretty excited for it because I like challenge. And even the, the streamers and content creators that went to Bungie to do the feedback for Destiny 2, they played some of this and were able to talk about it after Bungie's stream. Uh, they said that they wanted them to make it harder, too. Mm. So so they've at, that was the right feedback moment that the developers said they were able to still tweak that a little bit. So that'll be a really, really, really difficult challenge um, for people that, that want that. So that'll be cool. People just want to nice. be invested in the game and they want to feel good about what they do. And I think Bungie is slowly addressing... Yeah, that that was lot. That's Locke's biggest concern. He had no reason to go in and play the game. The end game right. content could be achieved by doing any bullshit, you know, by right. doing the clan shit every week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, which was one one of the things that detracted it for me because I mm-hmm. I wasn't in a cool clan. And then the clan. last thing that they're going to be uh, adding in a week a week. <laughs> fuck off. We are a cool clan. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last thing uh, that we're going to get that's pretty major is the return of private matches for Crucible. Thankfully, I know so that's a heavily, that'll, heavily requested. It's the only feature. way. Well, it's a heavily yeah. requested feature because a good majority of the pro top streamers of Destiny w- want to go become pro Destiny competitive competition type fucking streams. Yeah. I mean, you can just make your own tournaments. We could have an you EG know, tournament. Like you know? your, your she snaps and your Broman want to be involved in like real tournaments, you know, where they can earn some scratch on top of all of the millions of dollars they're making. <laughs> like, you know? I, I mean, you could, the only you thing PUBG I would want a tournament. Yeah. You could do a destiny tournament and I mean, stuff like that at, at conventions, like whatever, yeah. it just opens up new doors. What saying, I would man. want out of uh, out of private matches is the ability to choose your 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 maps, your playlists, your like edit edit the amount of the way of kills to win. Like, you you I, can I all those the features are going all those yeah. They yeah will, because it was available. They, they demoed all of that, and you can it was in D1, all of those right? settings. Yeah, yep, all of those settings will be there. You choose match type, you choose your destination, you choose amount of lives, uh, amount of time. Um, all of that is adjustable. Yeah, because, yeah, I'm thinking like a, like a like a classic Halo 
custom game yep. you know like you could do in the old halo games it's it's exactly that well, you, you, you can't perfect. do an effective fucking Rocky montage when you're training, right? Without pr- a fucking private, like, gym to train in. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And, and that's not, exact. Not. That's exactly the fucking problem with, with, well, with... Do you remember, we were chatting with Locke, when Destiny 1 didn't have private matches yet. And it that was something that the community was really, really kind of calling for. And private matches in Destiny 1 didn't come out until the last year, until the year three of its life, until Rise of Iron. I believe that's accurate. Yeah. Um, but he made a really good point because Locke has played Halo professionally um, and was pretty successful with that. He, would exp- he, he mentioned something that made perfect sense. Him and his team would load up private matches just to explore the maps, just to walk around the space and know super intimately the curves, the corners, the lanes for mm-hmm. shooting, like the the, the hideaways, yeah, yeah, like all yeah. and like kind of plan your strategies in there because yeah, you would liter- you literally figure out where you could shoot the sniper rifle most effectively. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, basketball players, football players, they go to the field and they stand where they're going to stand, and they they know where their they moves pra- are. They practice go. positions. It's, yeah, it's and that now becomes a thing that's possible. What would Rocky do if he didn't have the goddamn slaughterhouse factory? You'd use HGH. You have to beat someone else's meat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there's your there's your Destiny 2 update. We're back to being a Destiny podcast. Oh, yes. We never stopped being a fucking Destiny podcast. We, we really never stopped. We just pretended to talk about some other things yeah. in the meantime. Uh, Neo, uh, <laughs> tell me, don't tell me the goddamn t- cool twisty ending, but tell me, oh, tell me your thoughts. Tell me your thoughts. Having finished God of War, um, so to preface, to preface, uh, it's <laughs> bringing it back to why last are week. you prefacing again? You're prefacing all over everything. <laughs> that was a good to preface. <laughs> good call. To back. preface, I want to thank you. Christ. I know it's the purpose. Super, um, super upset. This past about it. this past week, I was on um, a podcast called The Lunar Castaways. Oh yeah, and yeah, we yeah, did I heard that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we did a full. Who, you can look who's them up is on that YouTube. again? Who whose podcast is that again? Um, they're a, a group of uh, cool kids from. Uh, they have their own Discord and everything. But they're um, in our Discord they ha- too. They are, yeah, I, yeah. They 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 do have their own special little there is section some in our Discord. W- Cross pollination. Shout out to the guys that are that are listening that are in there. No, Hello. but I remember. Absolutely. I'm trying to remember the names of the people who specifically run it in our. That's not important so, right now, unless yeah. unless we <laughs> want to. No, they're they're I mean. people. Their tags are named. They're like one's Iron Storm. You got Jacket got it, got it. and Andy, um, and I, Demos. I was just trying. Yeah, form- I was just trying to get a frame of reference. That's all. Yeah. Um. So they're really cool guys. They had me on their podcast to do a whole spoiler cast on God of War. We all finished it, and we wanted to talk about it. So if you want to hear spoiler discussion on that with my thoughts on that, go there. I will not spoil it here. Lunar Castaways. Yeah. Lunar so castaways. Lunar, Lunar Castaways, find them on YouTube, find them on iTunes. They're, they're a, a, all available. So to tell you, Felix, about finishing it. I, I just have yes. one. I need one clarification. So all Go of ahead. you, because I asked this specifically of Snacks the Cat today, because he said he finished it as well. So awesome. all of you finished just the story. Not, you, not you, every little side fucking thing that I'm clinging no. to like a no. lunatic and you you won't almost until like you won't be able to complete the game until you roll the credits um because after that happens a lot more stuff happens that opens up and you can continue to do other activities like i'll give you a kind of non-spoilery answer there are these hard bosses that are hidden throughout the world yeah i know and the purple fuckers they have purple bars not necessarily them. You're talking about the rift, the rift people. I'm so talking those are about just the ones. Challenges, you, yeah, the ones you pull out of the rift are a nightmare. I yeah, yeah, they get really hard. It's like um, mini but, God of War parts, God of War mode parts in the game. Yep. Uh, yeah, but you're real, saying there's some other kind of boss that I'm not aware of that are even more challenging. Um, I'll, I'll, it's not a spoiler. They're they're Valkyries that are. Oh yeah, that yeah, are, yeah, like, yeah. Hidden. Yeah. No, I've yeah. started to unlock that shit. Yeah. So once you, oh, really? You've you've been you found a Valkyrie? No, no, no. I got to the part where you start lighting the torches because the kid can decipher the names of the. 
them and they're gotcha. mentioning what, what was what was that hand motion again felix deciphering the he name does, he does this yeah he takes his <laughs> knife he draws in the sand to unlock stuff yeah it, the, um, it's, i mean from someone who has not played the game, that that hand motion looked very questionable. Uh, sorry, the the hand motion was like the jerk off hand motion, um, but I was really just trying to simulate what a kid does with a knife. <laughs> what what a kid does with with, what? With, with a knife with a knife. Sure, sure, when sure. He, when he's spreading it in sand. Oh, stop! <laughs> I don't even want to just. Oh that. I man! Don't even just you know what's funny? So None of that. You, you weren't trying for any of that. That was just the natural yeah, words you chose. That was just right every moment. I'm fucking stupid. Yeah. Um, no, no, it's 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 great. So yes, I'm familiar with that's with that coming down the pike for me, but I'm not there yet. So one all right. So one thing I noticed about the game is, um, for most of it, I was pretty overpowered because of of how I was leveling my character. I was just constantly You're throwing wrong. points. And and yeah, I was strong. Yeah. So I was doing pretty well most of the game. You get to these Valkyries, and all of a sudden it's a different game. Uh, everything's a lot harder. So you have to tweak your gear RPG style to kind of counter these Valkyries. If they do fire damage, you got to make sure your gear is prepared to either have defense against Valkyries or other, other kinds of skill specific things. That's good. I'm like already doing socket, that. Yeah. You socket your gems. You can, you can socket your gear with different gems and, and all kinds of tweaks that you do to your gear to beat these Valkyries. I have not like started on that path of beating these Valkyries. I have beaten one and it was through sheer willpower that I did it. Uh, I died. It took me almost 40 minutes to beat the first Valkyrie. Wow. Just dying over and over again until I memorized the Valkyrie's pattern and brute force countered this. I got really good at countering. Are they, um, are they like, boss fights that have a lot of ads too? Some of them do. Okay. Um, one that I, I, the first one I came across was just a pure Valkyrie and I learned her pattern and eventually after 40 minutes of trying, I, I did beat her. 40 but minutes. That's how long it's going to take. Holy oh, shit. Oh yeah. It's, it's all in my VOD too. You can, you can see it. I clipped out me finally beating the Valkyrie, um, but I got, I got really good at memorizing her pattern and just countering and, and attacking, countering and attacking. Uh, and that's how well, that took. The next Valkyrie I came across, which I did not beat, summoned a group of ads and then did a whole pattern. So I was like, nope, I'm not, I'm not spending another hour trying to figure out how to beat this right now. I'm going to finish the game. So, this is before I, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't have either. I would you like, witnessed Peace. my streams, yeah. right? When I put, played God of War mode. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah. Would you, wide. would you, I, would you argue? <laughs> that's fine. Would you argue that, that that what you saw me doing is very similar to what you were doing with these Valkyrie fights? I think God of War mode is just intentionally difficult for the sake of being difficult. It's for the people who are just just want to be really really good at the combat. Okay, so you felt the Valkyrie fights were doable eventually. They're oh, hard, they're completely they're hard, doable hard, with within doable. within like normal parameters. Like it like it takes everything you've learned through playing normal gameplay and saying here is a challenge. This is this is a combat challenge that you can overcome easily, but you need to be smart about it. You can't just brute force your way through this fight. Got it. That's that's essentially what they do. Cool. Um, to give you my just overall impressions of the game, I think it is definitely one of the best games I've played this year so far. It's a lot of people online are saying this is already their game of the year. I don't know. Sure, I could say yes. Right now in May, this is my game of the year. That's an easy look, thing to say. Look, last year but, Horizon Zero Dawn came out, and I had no problem being like, "This is this is it." Unless. Yeah. Unless something else happens, which it did. Uh, yeah, two two weeks two weeks later, Zelda yeah. comes out. Yeah, I was like, this would have been game of the year. It's, and it's easy to say that, but overall, the way Game of uh, Game of Thrones, the way God of War is <laughs> is put together as a game, it's so tight and solid. It is all the best parts of a Metroidvania game, and it's paced so well that there's never a moment where you're like. Oh, there's too much fighting going on. I really wish there was some downtime. No, it it happens at the moments that feels best. The game is really now, good at the highs and lows that they throw at you. I have a question. Go on, go on. Yeah, uh, you mentioned just now that the game takes the best parts of of, of a Metroidvania type game. Yeah, I'm it unfamiliar with me... this being used for a three dimensional game. So, did you ever play Arkham Asylum? 
No. So Arkham I Asylum, I would, I would consider Arkham Asylum also a uh, Metroidvania 3D style game. What's up, Felix? What he's talking about, Trip. So a normal Metroidvania game is a game that looks like Metroid. Basically, you go vertical, you go down, you go side scroll yeah you have, you've got areas that got and areas. i guess this could be applied to to a three-dimensional game to an extent you you have an area you explore and you you unlock new areas and go back and no. uh, you, you and unlock you abilities that will take you to different uh, areas yeah sure, yeah sure. like ima- imagine that moment when you got to like you were side scrolling and you got to the edge of like some kind of fucking cliff or whatever and you look over on the other side there's like a ledge and on that ledge mm-hmm. is some kind of item or chest or some kind of bullshit that you could get yeah, at, that, that then gets right? you right and you kept trying to jump at it and each time you 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 didn't get far enough right and you just fucking fell and you fucking fell and you went god damn it i should be able to get it but i'm just missing it and then you realize that later on in the game your character your metroid character gets rocket packs on her back that shoots her yep. over to that spot. And then you get This game is exactly the same way. If you don't press forward with the story, it, like if you get hung up on the fact that you can't get at that thing, you waste time. You, you waste, need to just, yeah, you'll, you need you'll to see press areas. Forward. That makes yeah, a lot of see, sense. Thank you'll you see for, areas for early in the down. game that'll be like, oh, you can't go through this door yet. I don't, I don't know why I can't do it yet, but then later you'll find an item through the story that yep. will go, Hey, now I can unlock doors that look like this. And, and similar, similar things of that fashion. Um, like there is the hub, the hub world that unlocks over time during the story, which is a, it's the giant bridge that is, that is in the middle of this big lake. Yeah. The big lake. And, yeah. And then uh, we talked about this last week, but the serpent who, who inhabits the land will pull out his body and it will drain the lake unlocking more activities and side areas to do. There are side missions in this game. Yeah, you will I come mean, across I, different various missions. I think the level um, the level of the water in the lake so far has dropped twice for me. So it I think drops, you got one more drop. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like a I think there's a I was reading that there's a third drop. Uh and each time it drops it just reveals more of the map and just gives you more puzzles to solve and more shit to look and collect and like yeah, the game is it's deceivingly well, enormous. Well, yeah. fucking built because it hides it's not like, its enormity. Yeah, it's not like Assassin's Creed Origins huge, <laughs> where it's, it's the real, shits all on the map, where it's just like, it's a, like a big ass map. Hey, like, look at all this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking everywhere. Yeah, have, have fun. That's, this game's um, like game I this, play. Ga- this game is like, hey, we're not going to show them all the shit. The shit's all there, but they just can't see it. <laughs> and they're just going to play yeah, forward I mean, and figure and out where it the is. The map and level design is so tight. Everything feels like every every time you go to an area, everything is real. Like the puzzles are like tight within the areas you're in. There's you're, They're littered with chests everywhere. There's always something to find in every corner. Uh, discovery is happens all the time. I have not experienced game, a bug game. yet. I have not experienced a bug yet in the no, game. And, Funny enough, since the game came out, they've been patching it almost every single day or every yeah, other like, day. A new patch has come out. Like, guys, you don't um, need to fucking do it, guys. You you you, you already built a game that works. <laughs> like, you you're patching more than fucking uh, Ubisoft does for any of their g- games. Yeah, and those real. games are full of horseshit, you know, bugs. You know. <laughs> so, o- overall, I'm just o- just really impressed with how the game. <laughs> Com- from beginning to end has felt and i can't wait till you finish it felix if you ever manage to spend time on it i know you, stream, you like to stream other things so yeah we but talked it's, it's such a fun game and you know what lock this is a game you need to play too yes i lock. know you also Speaking love directly. Norse mythology, and i hope he's listening to this because he's not here i hope he do- i hope he does well i mean that but this is not the norse so- mythology alone is is so interesting to just be immersed in that world it's great. Well, this is not something that really spoils anything because you find this out in the first 10 minutes of playing the game, uh, Trip Zero. But, like, the okay. thing that's most fascinating about him, uh, about this story... Kratos? Kratos, oh. yeah, sorry, Kratos. The thing that's most fascinating is the fact that he's a god from Greece who fucking relocated without... I think we, 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 we I t- chatted about you, this, I Did think, we already talk about yeah. this last week? Yeah, yeah, like he's crossing over into the Norse like realm, and, and he, he is basically like in a there. place where he shouldn't be, you know. Right, and they they all fucking know that's, who that's, he is. That's a shit. really cool dynamic. Yeah, I yeah. fuck with that. So he's like in 
trying to keep it on the DL basically. And mm-hmm. it's very, it's becoming very hard with, with various factors that we don't need to spoil, but like yeah, but sure. the factors are becoming more evident. Things are spiraling out of control and he can't keep a lid on who he is. Well, the, the best, the best part is the dynamic with his son and his son asks questions and he's very intelligent. He re, he knows how to read the language in the, in the world. And because every he grew time, up and his mother taught it. Yeah. To yeah. Him. Yeah. Cause he's native to it. But and Kratos is very like he, he's very to himself and he doesn't want his son to know his past. He doesn't want him to know that he's a, that he's a god. It's very and, realistic. And it's, it's like any father. Yeah. Any father. He's just like it's, it's if you like La- Last of Us, the dynamic between, you know, those two characters, Joel this has Ellen, a very yeah. similar feel to it. And I think it's, it's, a, yeah. I think it's, it's really different and I think it's a little uh, I, I personally think it's a little better. Um, I definitely think it's 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 different in the right ways. Oh know? yeah, but but yeah, um, it has that the, same camaraderie the, feel. The best feeling that you get is from the beginning of the game when he's kind of like a, a, a novice when it comes to combat and stuff, and then as you progress through the game and you get the upgrades and you you fight your way to the, like to the end, you and your son become this like really tight fighting unit, and it's and you feel it in the combat. You see him get braver um you get a message early in the game saying hey uh atreus feels a lot more comfortable in combat so you're going to see him do a lot more um active stuff so feel free to upgrade him a lot more and it's that's pretty cool it's crazy by the end of the game you guys are like in sync and what is Felix laughing at here (laughs) what deal with his his fucking pronunciations They Atre- say they say his name the whole time. He says Boy, Atreus. Atreus. <laughs> well, he here's the thing. He's, he calls him he calls him Boy the whole game, but he does. when it's like really important and when it's really meaningful, he'll and he when Kratos is worried, he'll say him he'll call him by his name. Yeah, it's like, not you know, Atreus. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's Boy. No, no it's a, you know, it's, saying, Atre- it's Atreus. Atreus. It's a trace. What I say, a- atrius? Atrius. Like, putting the stress on the He's a fuck. Syllable. He's a, like he's a oh. fucking atrium. <laughs> sorry, allow me to profess again. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm just fucking with you, dude. I heard that too, but I was just gonna let it, to let it go. <laughs> just, just let my. Yeah, he does. In happen. your defense, he does call him boy mostly. He's a boy. boy here. But boy then, here. but then boy. when you hear him call him by his name, it's like, oh shit, he's acknowledging him. And every after every battle, he'll go. How did I do, Dad? How how was how was my fighting there? And he'll go adequate or and yeah. like if you use him because you he he has his own like button in the game for the combat. So when you use him properly and if you use him effectively, then I believe it affects what Kratos responds to him at the end of the, ba- of the no, battle. No, no, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, like yeah, you, you'll make him do something that he hadn't done, like a skill he hadn't used, and then and then he'll reward him with like verbal praise. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good and, work. Yeah, to, and to finish up what what I have to say about this, this is by far the best Thor game we're ever going to get. It feels, <laughs> it feels so like good, it. man. Yeah. You throw that axe yeah. and then you recall it, yeah, and yeah, it just yeah. slams back into your hand. Best it's, mechanic. Oh my god! All of the the fighting that I've watched makes it look really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Do you remember last year when we were like, "This looks kind of like uh, the combat looks like stiff and real tight." Didn't yeah. it didn't look or feel good in in the early presentations we saw, um, but I got to tell you, man, it's it, it starts slow, but as you unlock skills and you progress, it it paces itself so well mm. to just feel like that's, you're getting stronger. Yeah, that's good to hear. It it, it personally gives me a lot of confidence for Days Gone. Definitely gives me a lot of confidence for Last of Us Two. Yeah, um, I mean, look, look, Sony's killing it. Right? They 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 have all their studios at full steam and it's it's showing there the amount of work that goes like i saw an article that said this game took five years to produce they they worked on it the moment um the last god of war game finished uh they were right in ascension ascension yeah which was a ps3 game so sony gives enough breath uh, for all these studios to do what they want and, and work how they want and it's it shows in quality and frankly sure. any sony game that comes out i'm in Detroit comes out at the end of next month, or is it this month? I believe it's this month. It's right? this month, dude. Oh yeah, I uh, I played the um the demo that they released. Oh, shit. The demo. That's what I had to do this week. I didn't get to play the demo. Can you tell mm. me about the demo? Is that okay? Are we done talking yeah, about God totally. of War? 
Yeah, move on. Move on. It's still Sony. Let's keep going. God of War. Uh, tell me about Detroit. How's that? How does it play? It was fucking cool, dude. Um, are you a Sherlock fan? Uh, I am. Like Sherlock Holmes? Like the, like the TV show. Like uh, the BBC Sherlock. Oh, fuck yes. You're like an Android Sherlock. Um, and I mean that in a lot of ways. Like you're, Can you create you're your character? Detective. No. Uh, this I, is a David Cage game. So they're all preset characters in this narrative. Got it. Yeah. Go so on. what what they gave you in um in this demo is a scenario where a um an android has a little girl hostage on a rooftop. He's standing on a rooftop. This is actually what we saw in the very first announcement trailer. Um, yep. This android has his girl on a rooftop and he's standing on the ledge holding her, uh, threatening to jump or at least throw her off uh, in to some capacity, right? Um, and you're brought in as a negotiator. You're, you're an Android. So the idea is that you're going to be impartial. Um, so you start in this scenario. It teaches you some very basic controls. It's a lot of like right joystick movement and, uh, and touch uh, your touchpad on your PS4 uh, to interact, which is pretty cool. Cause like you'll pick up like a device and, you know, we're all familiar with like swiping gestures on our smart devices. You like slide over on your touchpad to unlock something. Uh, little, little stuff like that it makes it kind of feel like you're really interacting with what you're holding. Um, but you you examine your area and you can notice things and interact with things. Um, you can you get up there and there's like a prompt to, to lean in, right? And the more that you collect, the more information that you see, uh, it gives you like an on-screen percentage saying your chances of success in your negotiation is going up because you know more about the uh, the person that you're talking to, which will unlock more dialogue. You'll have more options. Yeah, I was going to say, that probably unlocks more options during the encounter. Yeah, go like, on. I learned, I learned the android's name. And so I was able to lead with that when I went out on the balcony. And, and immediately the the bad android's like, like how do you, you know, how do you know? Um, just caught him off guard a little bit. Little things like that can all make a difference. Um, as you notice things, like it does in the BBC Sherlock, text will pop up um almost in like an augmented reality way floating oh, above cool. what you're looking at. So you just kind of like, it's like you're seeing his mind and his process understand things. Um, and one of the coolest features is, is like I went over to examine like a dead body that was on the floor. Right. Um, and I looked at it and you examine all the, all the wounds. And I saw like three gunshot wounds and you know, he's putting together. He's like, Oh, this like Nick, the, the, um, like the left Art lung thing. and bled out into the, into the body and stuff like that. Um, and then after you gather enough about the scene, he creates like a wireframe reconstruction that you can watch and play backwards or forwards and spin the camera around to any angle. So you watch this and you can catch things that happened, right? So when I examined enough of, of this body that ended up being the girl's father, um, you saw him sitting down on a chair in his living room uh, looking at something. And then you see the wireframe of someone coming up as if, you know, you're imagining this someone coming up with a gun, shooting him, hitting him in the back. He gets up and like turns around. He gets hit two more times and his body flies back. Right. But his hand like like goes this way and throws this thing that he's holding. You follow that and you can you find like uh, an iPad like device in the room that you pick up and you see it on like a like a sale completion page for buying a new Android. Mm. So you have a motive. Right there, which can, which can help you in yeah in the negotiations. Now this is like nothing too outside of the norm of like you know a point and click CSI game for a computer, right? Nothing too revolutionary. Have here. you have but either of you played Heavy Rain? I, I did. Not. I played Heavy Rain. Yeah. This this is definitely this is the same developer. This is the same it, guy. It feels who made it. like the next version, the best version of that kind of narrative story with way more interaction. Cool. Um, What's cool is that some of these things you find will give you choices. Like I found a handgun and it's like, do you want to, do you take the handgun or are you going to leave it? And then, but it also popped up a little information piece like, Hey, according to this uh, law passed in 2032, androids are not allowed to even hold or carry firearms or use firearms at all. Do you want to take the gun? Yes or no? Like something like that. Ooh. And that's going to that that mean something as well down the road. Right. Um, also some things you do will give you another marker. It says like, like global trust increased. Like I saved a cop during one playthrough. One playthrough I didn't, another playthrough I did. I saved a cop's life who I found bleeding out and I tied a tourniquet around his arm. 
How much uh, of this game? How much of this game did you play? Trust. Hold on. Hold on. I'll I'll get there. Um, the global trust is like people's perception of androids. So the more that you do that can like align yourself with humans, you'll be perceived better. Mm. It's like earning earning political points. So yeah. yeah, so we don't know how this is going to affect the major story, but but because of how these things play out, and because of how much variance I had in like what was probably a ten minute, honestly, a ten minute chunk. Um, your your actions and choices are going to imp- impact everything as close to real life as possible. Um, well, the, another another cool thing that I think separates this from like a normal you know exploration kind of investigation game is the fact that while you're looking, the clock's ticking. So I was spending a lot of time examining this this dude, this guy, and a SWAT uh, a SWAT guy leaned out too close and was going to make a move on his own because he was getting tired of waiting. He got fucking shot. Oh shit! Yeah, uh, the, a, a SWAT. How many uh, how many times did you play killed. this scenario? I played it twice through. Um, the second time I played, I had the benefit of seeing a. They show you a web. They show you a um, a, a diagram, a choice diagram, and it is fucking massive, just for the little one room, one apartment experience that I had. Um, but I could go back on the second playthrough, having access to that. I kind of try to find things because they don't tell you what is where it's still grayed out if you haven't done it, but you, it will essentially tell you, Oh, before you actually get out to the balcony, there's like three more scenes you could find. Oh, like I found one, like there was a fish flopping on the ground. Uh, Cause like a, a fish tank got, got fucked up a little bit and you see the fish flopping and it's like, do you put the fish back or do you leave the fish? And I was like, Oh, hmm. I'll put the fish back. And it was like global empathy increased like stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. Because now, you weren't a mean I, robot that killed that fish. Right, exactly. Just to, to fill you in on how these games play out, like Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls were all choice-based games that all had different outcomes and endings, and your choices all affect the the overall global story of these games. Yeah, it's like a, um, a, the, one of those text-based choose-your-own-adventure games. Exactly, exactly. Like, that. Day, but. like with with the most insane amount of variables that I've ever seen in a, in a game. Just FYI, uh, Beyond Two Souls, the second game in, uh, that was on the PS3, is, oh, that's, that's free right now for PS Plus yeah. members. I'm gonna, so I'm you gonna could technically that download sure. and play that. On a PS4? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And that's starring, starring Ellen Page and Willem Dafoe. Yep. Oh god, it's very good. It's cool. I, I, it didn't get as good marks as uh, fr- um, heavy rain, but yeah, it's Felix. Don't worry about it. No, I just, <laughs> but it's a really I cool just game. finished the worst audio book. This is a side tangent, but Willem <laughs> Dafoe was reading The Langoliers by Stephen <laughs> King, and it was the worst fucking performance ever. Uh, he was bad at it. Oh, he was Phoned so bad fucking bad. He defoed that shit. He defoed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so. so so, so, this, yeah. so everything you played, mm-hmm. it's, it seems like, you know, par for the course of, of David Cage games, but more it, like a lot, right? a lot more. Yeah. Um, so I think I forget how many endings I saw for the Android, but I got two. the very first time I played it, dude, it was so intense. Like I was like scared of what was going to happen for this girl. And I was like, like, what do I do in these decisions? Cause every, every choice is a timer. You can't sit there and, and, and pine over them. You got to fucking make a choice. Uh, so he like, I'm getting the guy at a good place. Right. But then this helicopter swings over and he starts getting fucking nervous and he's on edge and he's like, get rid of that hel- fucking helicopter. And I'm like, Oh shit. Do I just start doing whatever he says? And I'm like, I'm going to get rid of the helicopter. And then I, I choose that and you wave it away. And then he's like, all right, I want a car and I, and I want this and like, I want to get away and, and I want no one like, like no one to follow me. And I'm just like, I got I, like, I want to get this guy on my side, but I can't keep giving him shit. So I said no mm-hmm. to that one. And he's like, like it's, it's not going to, like, you know, it's, you know, it's not going to work, Daniel. And like, he was like, he's like, I, I just, I just don't want to die. Like, so he was like, okay with that, but it was like still super stressful. Right. And like, eventually like I just built up trust with this, with this Android. Um, and I'm like, I think, I think I'm getting there. Right. And I'm, I'm so, so tense. He let, let's go with a girl. And the girl like runs toward like their pool, just away from where he's at. 
And I'm like, I'm still on edge thinking, what is he going to do to this girl? Is he going to like fucking snap and just like, like take her out or something? Um, is he going to have a gun? Is he going to pull out a gun and shoot the girl? Like, what is he going to do? And then like the girl went away safe enough. And then a sniper takes a shot and kills the Android, like just takes half his face off. Oh shit. And then he looks at, at you and he's like, I trusted you. Like you promised I wouldn't get hurt. Cause I did. Oh, I told him he wouldn't yeah, get hurt and I didn't think he would. I thought I was telling the truth. Um, you dirty snake. But what happened? You. What happened to the girl? The girl was fine. Girl was fine. Um, the, the SWAT uh, guys came over and, and took her out, but like fucking Android got his head blown off in the second scenario. Um, what did I do? I, I left the helicopter and he was getting pissed off. Um, I was just being real with him, right? I, I went super real. He was like, I don't want to die. And then my response basically made me say, like, use your head, man. Like, you killed, like, a whole family. You're holding a girl hostage. I don't know uh, what other way out there is for you. But we'll make yeah. it painless or something like that. So he grabs the girl. And he starts fucking, like, he's like, all right, well, peace. peace. And he just fart, <laughs> fucking, like, starts falling off the roof. So at that point, I had another choice. Uh, do I stand there or do I like go to run and try and save this girl? So they, they present that by, it's like a button mashing. You got to mash X as your button. And I did that as fast as possible until a little ring, you know, fills all the way up. And at that point, like you get close enough to grab the girl. And the way that I, the way that your character ends up doing it in that scenario is he pulls the girl and he throws her back on the roof. And to make sure that he doesn't try to pull any shit, you throw yourself at the android and you send both of you guys down off the roof oh wow so you send yourself to your death but the the mission is save the girl no matter what the cost so that's that she is the mission, an acceptable yeah. outcome yeah so um man this game must be real cinematic it is oh yeah I, I i recommend at least you guys and you guys listening out there download the free like demo like get a feel for it. it's free and it's a cool experience like if you if that's enough for you that's dope like it's a it's a cool little demo it's a fun experience to have on your ps4 and i believe it's still active on the store so um yeah yeah it's, it. it's gonna be it's gonna be live for forever and you can go back and you can find new things and try new scenarios and try to fill out your entire branch and get everything unlocked and everything visible awesome so i will i'll be picking that up for sure that sounds oh great. yeah i gotta play that demo and check it out i'm probably also gonna pick it up because yeah that game just look just looks awesome. It's, I love the cyber style. Seem, yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem streamable because like you're just gonna be doing a lot of sitting and watching. Yeah. You know? Unless they they incorporated a mode where your viewers could choose an outcome, that could be cool. That would be pretty sweet. Well, if you're we'll on see, if know. you're if you're streaming on Mixer and you're not doing it like I'm doing it, like it's the there's no latency in the chat, so. You could just, There's not enough time for people to type and tell you what to do and then, then press it. Like oh, every choice is on, a, is on a very, is like maybe a five second timer, maybe even less. Oh, wow. Um, but like if I put the choice in the chat and people could just click, like that would, that would work. And like majority wins or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. So, gotta develop that. so guys. So, Red Dead 2. Oh, that trailer dropped. That shit dropped watch it? today. That hot, hot new non-gameplay trailer. Yeah. Mm. Are we? That's okay? how Rockstar does so it. that's a good question. Are we okay with that? This is I mean, now yeah, the third fine. fucking. We don't trailer. have an option. We don't have an third option. Third fucking trailer, <laughs> and as of yet, we still haven't got any gameplay. But if if I think back to Grand Theft Auto Four, which Facebook reminded me was ten years ago. <laughs> Sheesh! Yeah. Wow. 10 years ago, Grand Theft Auto 4 had three trailers and they were all, none of them were gameplay. They were all cinematic. Nuts. All three of them were, were cinematic. Well, we didn't know how the game was going to play. We, we saw shots of Liberty City and it looked like New York and we were fascinated by that. And that was enough is now we're many games deeper. Are we okay with that? Yeah, like because other com- uh, other companies have been releasing gameplay trailers. I mean, Ubisoft has been in the habit of showing you this, this you know, this canned, very, very tailored fucking walkthrough shit for years. I kind of, well, I I do kind of like the the choice to do it that way because like everyone clamors for the gameplay clip, and I like people just going against the grain. Here, here's what I think is going to happen. 
this is like Rockstar's style. They did this with GTA 5. They showed a bunch of story beats in trailer form like we just saw with Red Dead. And then closer to release, what they did with GTA 5 was they're like, here's all the things you're going to do in the world. Here's the side activities. This is what the online is going to look like. They had that narrator guy saying, here are some things you can do. Tennis. Isn't that, an apartment. Isn't that usually? Do heist. Isn't that, when is that? Is that usually like after the game releases or? No, that, those are all, that was pre-promotional stuff. That, those were, and then, and then you'll get, you'll get gameplay. This trailer gave, gave the exact release date of the game it was October 23rd, I think is what it said. Oh, yes, it, yeah. and, it was an October yeah, 20 something date. 20 something. So I think after they, they're not going to be at E3, I'll tell you that right now. Rockstar doesn't do E3 ever. He, like, yeah, Trip, never, Trip Zero didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know. They never, they never show Phillips up. The, the, the last day. time they showed up was during a PS3 conference and they were, they were showing off a game called Agent, which never oh, happened. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was, that was never ever come they never came to fruition i didn't i so had I told think, him that they had never been to a, an e3 but you you're saying they yeah they, they don't were. do it they play by their own rules at this point i mean gta 5 is probably one of the biggest it's the biggest entertainment release ever over the span since well, I, 2013 no i was telling trip zero the specific reason that i read in the the there was like a i don't know if it was an official or unofficial biography that i read called jacked by I don't remember the writer, but like it was written. Oh yeah, the rock star. It was written story. written about Dan and Sam Hauser, and Dan and Sam Hauser are the founders of Rockstar Games. They're brothers, and Sam Hauser was always an anti-establishment type developer. He was always like gaming establishment is bullshit, like because they shunned them. They shunned them when they were trying to push uh, GTA uh, three or GTA two into the marketplace somehow. I don't know how, I, I can't remember the specifics, but right. they, they were always like, fuck E3. E3 is just like bullshit. It's just, a, you know, like yeah, cor- their, corporate their games have their own big corporate types. Yeah. And this, yeah, this, is a, mean, this is a mentality that they carried with them from when they were like, you know, guerrilla developers or whatever they saw themselves as idealistically. Mm-hmm. At this point for Rockstar, they they can show their games on their own terms and they know it will dominate a news cycle no matter what. Um, they always and look like they release this trailer, what, three or four weeks before E3. They don't they don't need that kind of press. They can wait till E3 is done, go into the fall and then just constantly release promo trailers of gameplay and do that then getting people hype about the game. They know the game's gonna sell already because of the name alone and because of the the developer alone. Right. They don't need to show gameplay right now. They're just getting this is this is them building more hype this year for their game and announcing the release data. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I was super impressed uh, that they showed a good majority of this this story based squad that we're going to get to know this prequel squad that in- incorporates some of the characters from the previous Dutch's game. gang. Yeah, it's yeah. it's you finally get to see Dutch's gang and you get to see what they look like and you get to see some of your favorites. I mean, uh, John Marston was Marston. Yeah. And then you see him with, you see him with fresh scars that are stitched up. So we might get to see like how he got them and everything. So, yeah. So yeah, it takes place 10 years before the events of Mm -hmm. red dead redemption one. Um, and there's takes place in 1899. Mm -hmm. That's the specific year that the trailer mentioned and what it, it called back to was the same themes that um, had st- existed in Red Dead Redemption, but had already came to pass. In other words, if we're talking like these themes being like, a, a, you know, uh, spoiling fruit or spoiling food of some kind, um, mm-hmm. this is when the Old West starts to turn, right? It's not it already turning rotten. Basically, Red, right. De- Red Dead Redemption was was the old West turning rotten, you know, with technology coming in. This is where it starts to turn basically. Okay. 10 years prior. The death of the, of the uh, wild West. Yeah. Well, they say specifically when at the moment when the legends of old West start to become entirely myth, you know, like 
there was a time period where it was five five years ago that some crazy bandit would be robbing a train. But this is the time after that when bandits are stuffs of legend. Like it, it's not something that's happening on a regular like regular basis. And the 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 East is constricting the West, which is a real phenomenon that occurred. You know, yeah, it was lawless, it was crazy, but then people like started with with manifest destiny. People really started to like encroach on these early settlements of the West. And basically, it's exactly that technology, social influence, politics, and all these different factors started to basically squeeze these people out of of the territory that they essentially founded um, or stole from Native Americans. I mean, either way, (laughs) that's what happened. 100%. (laughs) One or the other. Um, But one. Well, they encroached (laughs) on Native Americans and then the American society from the East encroached on them. So Encro- encroachment. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's great, dude. It looks, uh, it looks really exciting. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're two episodes into Westworld. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling the vibe. Thank you 100%. for bringing oh, that yeah. up. Thank you oh, for bringing yeah. that up <laughs> that they, they, they drop these fucking trailers at the most apropos moment in terms of convergence of media. They know, they know what they're doing. Oh my God. Cause, cause they, I, if I, from what I've read about Sam and Dan Hauser and, and the production crew over at Rockstar, they're fans of this shit. They modeled. They literally most- dropped it in the middle of the week. It's the midpoint between episodes too. So it's like we're as far and as close to more Westworld. Yeah, so like yeah. it's it's like a little bit of a hit, a little bit of a You're ravenous hit for right Westworld. Come and come and join our Westworld. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I Westworld's going to end, and I'm going to be like, I need this game. I wouldn't doubt for a second that they didn't plan it this way. Yeah so good they were like let's wait until westworld comes out we know we're gonna we're gonna get them we're gonna get them real good and like don't don't do a week one because everyone will super super hyped do a week two when you feel like you're back into the regular routine show groove but you still want more because you're you're new yeah you're new into the story (sighs) oh hell yeah oh well i have a plan i'm definitely going to stream red dead one leading up to the release of this game probably over midsummer probably midsummer i'm going to kick in some red dead streaming and do the full game cool cool so you guys can awesome. definitely check that out on 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 my stream i i oats, I, oats has played a good amount of that too yeah yeah recently recently oats and i have been talking on a regular about it like he's been keeping me up to date on what parts of the story he's in and everything like that mm-hmm. and asking me who characters are or who's that guy going to be or whatever later and he's just I don't know. He he thinks all the characters are pretty entertaining. So he's. I mean, that's he's. That's the first kind of game like that he's played. Like we've played GTA online with some friends, but like he's never really like dove in headfirst to a single single player open sandbox type game. Right. Which you're right because he's not even like if you ask Kevin Oates about like TV shows or movies or anything like that, like. He doesn't do that. He doesn't sit and watch a story, you know, for an extended Even every, period of time. He's got very specific things that he's into and, and tastes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But like, if, like games, he's more of like a, like an arc shooter, like Contra, Metal Slug. Those are his his absolute favorite games of all time, like mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, he's been expanding his his palette. Like he did Ocarina of Time on the 3DS. He's playing Earthbound right now. Uh, in addition to to Red Dead, and that's an RPG, so far out of his wheelhouse, it's it's nuts. So he's, he's a real fan I, of the classic. He is, he is, but he's also like expanding his his palette a little bit, which I appreciate. Yeah, I mean, he getting he, out, he, getting he out, was getting out of the old game comfort zone. He was asking me a couple of questions. He was asking me about God of War. I don't know if he's into that or anything, but he was just definitely asking me about it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm definitely going to. See if I get any traction from playing Red Dead in the lead up to this game coming out. See what happens. Very cool. Nice. It's backward compatible. I got it on the um I got it on the uh the Xbox. The old one. Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. So got it on the box. Definitely gonna be able to kick that. Any other things you guys want to say about the trailer? No, I I mean it looked good. looked exciting, yeah. I think we did it. I think I think we did I mean 
we, we did a show. We might be just under an hour on the show. This is like, a, like a first in a long time. <laughs> nice and tight. Yeah, real, real tight. Um, it's a, it's a light news week, so it was you know. man. There just wasn't anything really out I, there. I liked, I liked it though. I liked the unpacking of, of some newsworthy things. Oh yeah. Instead of I mean, being like a headline blaster, because you could get you know, that shit. Anyway. We'll have more destiny to talk about when you get your hands on uh, that expansion. Um, yeah. And E3 is yeah. coming up, so like it's gonna be it's gonna be slow leading up to that. So I'm you'll, hoping you'll get your news out there, fam. Don't worry. Yeah, and soon you'll you'll hear us. We're gonna have an E3 prediction episode soon. Uh, we're gonna talk about the rumor roundup and everything we're expecting to see and things that we want to see. So. Yeah. That'll yeah, be good. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm real excited. Hopefully, you think you think we'll there's any chance of getting lock in for that or we'll see. No promises, yeah. but we'll we'll try no to coordinate as best there. we can. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Right. Woo. Uh. Later. Yeah. Later, dudes. How about this? How about this? Yesterday, t- sorry, two days ago, I fell asleep on the couch um, watching um, Michelle Wolf's stand up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah. I wa- I watched her so it could hear her talking in her stand up uh-huh. routine yeah. and, and me snoozing probably on the fucking couch. Sure. I, I, wake, I wake up after snoozing. And my fucking entire Facebook feed are people either commenting conservatively or liberally on this M- Michelle Wolf, like WHCD fucking presentation. The Correspondence Center. Yeah. Yeah. You need to delete Facebook off your phone.